everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a sort of expectations versus reality on the Royal and Lang Nickel acrylic paint paint by number. And when I first received this kit as a Christmas present from my mom, um, I did it and I was kind of disappointed because you can see through the paint to the numbers that they have under it, but I really thought that this was a cute concept and I thought it was really cute, so I decided to try to fix this painting using my own acrylic paints that I've purchased from Hobby Lobby. I'll have those paints li linked in the description box below so you can check them out if you want to. They're the Anita's brand and I really love them and I love that they dry in a matte finish. I just really think that that gives it a rich, really pretty look. Um, the Royal and Langnickel um, acrylic paints that come in this kit do dry with a shiny finish, just so you know that. But the brush that I'm using in this part of the video is also from my own collection. This did, isn't the brush that came with the kit. But what I'm kind of doing is I'm putting in the black and dark, dark brown for the background, and now I'm going over it with the lighter tones on the dog's body to just kind of give myself a blank slate to just start over with his body. And then I know I probably wouldn't have needed to go in the background and add that black, but I just wanted it to be cohesive and all to have the same finish on it, so I did end up doing that. And now I'm just kind of covering it with a different different finishes of like beige and cream on the dog's body and then for the nose what I did was I kind of re-wet the area where the nose was for the dog and I kind of sucked that color that I had put on it up again just because I really didn't want to lose the definition of the nose I wanted that to sort of be there for me as a stencil to help me out as I go so at this point I'm just going to continue painting and adding shading using the different colors. I'm adding in green for the grass and then adding more shading under the dog. So basically I'm just kind of finding where the shadows should be, where the areas should be darker, where they should be lighter, adding those highlights and shadows. And I found that this was a really enjoyable process. I really liked this. I think it's because... Um, Often what I have difficulty with is, you know, the original sketch can be a little bit difficult to get the proportions perfect so that it looks accurate when you're done and looks really nice. So having it already down there, the original design and sketch was there for me and I could just, it's kind of like just coloring in a coloring book, but what's nice is this page isn't going to warp because it's sort of like a canvas material. It does have some texture to the surface of this um, board you might call it. It has like a cardboard backing to it and then it's like I don't know what texture or what material this is made out of but it's stiff and I just really enjoyed working off of this and I spent I don't know like four hours maybe more. I tend to spend quite a bit of time on paintings but I found this process was really fun and enjoyable and I liked working with the different creams and brown and that kind of tones. Oh, and another thing I did want to mention is that I actually, even though it looks like it, I didn't use any white in this project except for, for the extreme highlights. Actually, I don't even think I did that. I literally just tried to use different colors of beige and cream and tan and all those different colors, but I, I pretty much told myself I'm not going to use white. I'm going to try to work with this and make... make a cohesive good-looking painting with just beiges and creams and that kind of thing so I really was happy and pleased with that because I think it gave the dog an overall soft and I, I thought it made did it look really nice and then another thing I ended up doing on the last layer of paint that I added to the dog is I sort of did like a tapping motion um, tapping rubbing motion so that it had more texture to it instead of just a flat streak it was more of a furry texture so it kind of made me think more of a little puppy than a grown dog because its fur was still that fuzzy young look but I really thought it was cute so I did like that it added some texture but at this point I'm just basically adding those finishing touches and for the most part that's all in the background adding the grass and the little details on the grass and the ground under him adding in the shadows but I hope that you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching bye